One thing that Yomp Note is good for is to procedurally animate things, like location, scale, and more importantly for the purpose of this video, rotation. Because in this video, the goal is to create a setup that aims to mimic the movement of a spinning spin top, like the one in Inception, using geometry nodes. Add a plane. Then head over to the geometry nodes workspace, and add a new node tree. First, add a cone from the mesh primitives. To keep things simple, I will start with this as a spin top object but I will show how you can swap it with your own custom model at the end of the video. Set the cone vertices to 4 and the depth to negative 2 to reverse the cone shape. Next, add a transform node and set the C translation to 0 0.75. This value controls where the origin of the object is along the z-axis and can essentially be thought of as the object's center of mass. Next, let's make it spin. Add another transform node, a scene time node, a math node set to multiply, and a combine XYZ node. Connect the seconds output of the scene time node to the multiply node. Then connect that node to the C input of the combine XYZ node. And finally, Connect that node to the rotation input of the transform node. This way, you can control the speed of the spin with the multiple node. And by using the seconds as the input value instead of the frame, the speed will be the same no matter what frame rate you're using. Next, let's add some wobbling to the spin to simulate the imperfections in the rotation. The way I will do it is by using a noise texture to add some random noise. Add another scene time node, a noise texture, and a map range node. Set the noise texture to 4D. This adds a new value to the node which is called the W value. This value essentially acts as an extra dimension of the noise, and by gradually changing it, the noise pattern changes in a seemingly random way. Also, set the scale to 2, and the distortion to 0 0.5. Connect the seconds output to the W input of the noise texture. You could of course just use the first scene time node. This is just to keep the node tree a little cleaner. Then, connect the factor of the noise texture to the value input of the map range node. And finally, connect the map range node to the X input of the combined XYZ node. As you can see, not only did we not add any wobbling to the spin, it actually stopped spinning completely. And that's because of how the field system in geometry nodes works. Inputs and outputs that are shaped like a circle are regular inputs with a single value. Inputs and outputs that are shaped like diamonds, however, are capable of representing many different values at the same time. And those values are calculated individually, depending on the context. I won't go in depth on the field system here, but if you want a good introduction to it, then I highly recommend this video by Arendale, link in description. But in short, the problem is that the output of the noise texture is not just a single value, which does not work as an input for a single value input, like the rotation of a transform node. There is a way to override this though, and that is by using a single value input as the vector for the noise texture. So add a vector node, and connect it to the vector input. This essentially makes it so that every output from the noise texture is calculated from the same vector, which means that it behaves as a single value output. Now all we have to do to create a wobbling effect is to set new 2 min and 2 max values in the map range node. I will use negative 0.25 as the 2 min and 0.25 as the 2 max, but different values will of course give different results, which might fit your needs better. The last thing we need to do now is to make sure that the bottom of the object is always located at the C position of the scene's origin. I will do this by using a technique that I saw in this video from CG Matter, where we use it to rotate a cube along the ground. Add a set position node, a bounding box node, 
a separate XYZ node, a math node set to multiply, and a combined XYZ node. Connect the geometry from the transform node to the bounding box node. Then connect the min output to the vector input of the separate XYZ node. Then connect the C output to the multiply node and set the bottom value to negative 1. Then connect it to the C input of the combined XYZ node. And finally, connect the combined XYZ node to the offset input of the set position node. The bounding box outputs gives you the maximum and minimum positions that the object occupies. So by taking the minimum C position and multiplying it with negative 1, we get the reverse of that value. We can then use that value to offset the position of the object, which essentially moves it that exact distance, towards the center in this case. This technique also allows you to do things like this. Before moving on to making the spin top move around, select all the nodes except for the group input and group output, and press Ctrl G to create a node group. This just makes it easier to work with, and it keeps the node tree more organized. The way I will add random movements to the spin top is by again using noise texture in a similar way to before. Add a transform node, a scene time node, a noise texture, a map range node, and a combined XYZ node. Set the noise texture to 4D like before, but this time set the scale to something small like 0.1. Then connect the seconds output to the W input of the noise texture. Connect the factor of the noise texture to the map range node, and set the 2 min value to negative 5, and the 2 max value to 5. Then connect that node to the X input of the combined XYZ node. Finally, connect the combined XYZ node to the translation input of the transform node. Just like before, in order for the noise texture output to work with the transform node, add a vector node and connect it to the vector input. This takes care of the movement along the X axis, so let's add some movement to the Y axis as well. Copy the noise texture and map range node with Shift D, and connect the map range node to the Y input. If we just connect the scene time node like before, we would get the same values for both X and Y, which would make it pointless to use two separate noise textures. So to fix this, add a math node set to add between the scene time node and the noise texture. Then set the add value to something large like 200. This essentially creates an offset in the W value that is used for the second noise texture, which makes the movement of the spin top appear more random and less uniform. And that's about it for the actual setup. So let me show you how we can use a different object instead of just a cone. Here I have modeled a couple of spin tops and added them to their own collection. In the spin top node group, Add an object info node. And connect it like this. Connect the orange object input of the object info node to an empty output in the group input. Exit the node group and connect the object input of the node group to an empty output in the group input. Now you can select any object that is available in the scene to be used as a spin top object out here in the modifiers tab. I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned something new. See you next time.